Private markets versus private equity. I said that wrong right there, y'all. I meant private equity versus public equities. I said private markets versus that's a private markets versus private equity. So which were the same thing. So anyway, some people call it the private markets, some people call it private equity, some people call it alternative markets, all sorts of things. In this episode, we're going to talk about what is the difference between private equity and public equity and what exactly does it mean? But ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a lot of time and I definitely, you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So ladies and gentlemen, you probably haven't seen me around a whole lot like you used to uh, when I was more active. And a large reason is that of me working into the private markets, private equity markets, private markets, right? When you work into the private markets, when you work into private equity, you start to get certain things as you have more compliance, things you have to be aware of. A prime example is called a private markets for their reason. Things are supposed to remain private. These are private companies, private sophisticated investors, things that are not known to the public or that shouldn't be known to the public. So. Now, on the public market are the public equities. These are things you heard of every single day. Google, Amazon, Facebook, Walmart. Um, I think those are top, some of the top names I can think of off the top of my head. Apple, things you can think of every day. Netflix, companies you trade every single day with money that you have. Now, in the public market, the public market means that anybody can go out there and buy it. In the private market, it means that only certain people can buy it. But that's what today's episode is going to be about. What's the difference between the public equity market and the private equity market? The first thing is how money is raised. When companies raise money, they got really two ways it boils down to where they can raise it. Either they're going to raise debt or they can raise equity. And when you say, I'm going to raise debt, debt is when you are... Uh, Debt is when you go out and go get a loan. For prime example, you may go get a loan or you may issue a bond, right? You may say, hey, um, hey, bank, let me borrow $1.5 million so I can go purchase a particular company. That $1.5 billion, that $1.5 million, that could be money that you can utilize to turn around and go and purchase the company. Now, the person that or the company that loaned you that $1.5 million, they may loan it to you at a 10% interest rate. So in return, they want their 1.5 with 10% interest rate back. They don't care if the company goes under, over, company does well, doesn't do well. They just want their 1.5 with their interest. Now, on a good on the other side, you can issue a bond. You can say, hey, um, I'm issuing bonds in my company so I can raise capital to go out and buy company XYZ. Company XYZ may be, um, let's say you may be going to purchase a McDonald's or something like that or whatever you're going to purchase. So you're going to say, hey, I'm going to give you, I'm going to issue out bonds at, a, I'm going to put a coupon on it of 5% and that 5% I'm going to turn around and I'm going to uh, purchase this company. So you as a bond, if you purchase a bond for me, you're going to give me $100 a day. I'm going to give you your $100 back plus 5% at maturity and let's say five year, five year bond or whatever. That's another way you're raising debt. Now on the other side of that, we say you can do something called raising equity. What does raising equity mean? And how is that different from raising debt? Raising equity is very risky for the investor on the investor side. Now let's take that same scenario. Instead of going to the bank saying, let me borrow $1.5 million, or instead of issuing $1.5 million of debt, I'm going to say, hey guys, I'm going to write up a investment proposal. And I'm going to say, hey, you want to make an investment inside of my company? I'm going to sell and issue shares in my company. Now, once I issue these shares, you can take these shares and you can go out and, um, I'm going to issue these shares and now you own a portion of my company. Now my company is going to go out and we're going to purchase a McDonald's, whatever your strategy is. And if the value of this share goes up, you can in turn sell it to someone else, sell it back to me, things like that, right? Same thing you see in the public markets. When you're looking at companies on the public market, when you go in and you buy that 
uh, Uber stock, Netflix stock, Amazon stock, whatever stock you go out and buy. These are things that are coming from the public market. Companies, this is how they raise money. They go out, they issue stock. You go out, you buy the stock. They in turn take the money and build research and development, build a new logo, whatever they're going to do to make company. The company does well. Value of the company rises. You as the shareholder, the value of your stock rises. The company doesn't do so well. The value of your stock declines. Notice the private debt people, they had no equity in the company, nor did they care what was going on with the company. I mean, they low key care. They just want to know you're doing good enough to be able to pay me back with interest. That's all the debt raiser were doing. Versus on the private equity side, when someone has equity, they have a position as shareholding the company. They're taking a larger risk because a company can go bankrupt at any time. They're hoping that you figure this thing out and become the next big Fortune 500 company. Now, next thing is liquidity. When you look at liquidity of a company, this is the difference between private equity and private debt. It's the liquidity market. Prince, what do you mean by liquidity? Liquidity is your ability to get your money out of an investment. For prime example, you can buy Apple at five o'clock. You can buy 100 shares of Apple at nine o'clock, well, 9.30 in the morning on the East Coast, and at 9.40, sell them, right? A very liquid market. Same thing with Amazon, Facebook, most publicly traded company that are large blue chip, mid cap, and even majority of small caps is once you start to get down to those penny stocks is where the liquidity and the volume starts to really kind of dry up a little bit. So liquidity, how fast can I get out of this investment? Prime example, let's go back to that scenario I gave you before. I told you, hey, I'm going to give you, I'm going to issue debt, right? And when I issue this debt, I'm going to raise money in turn to go buy, be able to buy this McDonald's, right? Now, when I go and do this, this in return, when I raise this money to go purchase this McDonald's, let's say if you decide six months later, Prince, you know what? I, I know you gave me a five-year um, bond. I want out of this investment. How easy it is for you to get out? For prime example, for you to walk into your checking account, you to put money in, take money out, buy something with it, very liquid, goes through very fast. Versus if you have money into a CD, CD, you gotta go through a couple of steps to get the money. You get into private equity, you gotta go to a good bit of steps. You have to go find somebody else, hopefully in a secondary market, they may wanna purchase your stocks, right? This is what you're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen. These are issues you're going to have when you are building things out, right? When you're looking at liquidity. In the public equity markets, the public markets, liquidity is pretty fresh and easy. You can go buy Walmart, sell Walmart. You don't have to go find a buyer. It's pretty easy to, to buy something and get in and out of it pretty easy. Versus on the, public on the private equity markets, it's a little bit tougher. If you go out here and invest into a private company, you go out here, uh, a sandwich shop, a private sandwich shop that was starting up. You purchase shares in it. You got these shares. Now you want to sell it so you can go buy, I don't know, a Lamborghini or whatever. You have to go find somebody in that market to be able to sell those things too, right? That's the difference between the public market and the public market. Liquidity, that's another thing. The first thing we discussed is how they raise their money. Either you're going to raise money through what? The two ways. You got it right, debt and equity. The second thing is liquidity. You have more liquid in the public market. It's a bigger market. Well, that's kind of changing <laughs> in recent years as the public, as the private market is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. The third thing is you have to be an accredited investor versus just being a public investor. Anybody that's over the age of 18, I think it's 18, might be even 17 nowadays, but in most, in most, uh, con well, not most countries, but here in America, it's like 18 years old. You have a social security number, you're a citizen, you can open up a stock exchange account, you can download an app these days, whatever, purchase you some stocks, sell you some stocks, right? Easy day. Versus if you decide, hey, I want to get into the, pub, uh, the private markets. Either you have the, a financial advisor that can get you into the private markets, 
or you uh, know somebody that can get you to the private market or something of that nature. So the private market, it's a little bit harder and tougher to get into, and you have to be an accredited investor. Um, I didn't. I should have known this before the show, but I don't want to put out bad information. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, if you are single, you have to make 250. I think it's about 250 thousand dollars a year over the last two years. Or if you're a married couple, 300 thousand dollars a year over the last two three years, and you're going to have to uh, run those. And you have to do it for the last two years. I think you have to have like a million dollars or $2 million in net worth, not including your primary residence. Something of that nature. You gotta be pretty well off. They wanna make sure you are sophisticated enough to be able to make an investment. Or if you hold certain licenses, if you're a licensed advisor, if you're a registered investment advisory, you are allowed to make uh, investments into the private market. The big thing is the public, the government wants to protect the public from anybody just jumping into something and saying, whoa, I didn't know I could do that. You can see this happen where the government is trying to protect the people in the public by saying, hey, you can no longer purchase this stock or buy this stock because of what's going on, right? When we had the Enron scandal, if you don't remember, these are companies that came out and put out a bunch of fraudulent reports, stole a bunch of money from the people in the public. So the government is trying to protect the people in the public who are just everyday people who are trying to invest their money to get a little bit of, get a little bit uh, to do a little bit better, get a little further ahead is what I was trying to say there. Versus when you're looking at people who do not make those investments. When you're looking at some people in the private markets is way the market is illiquid. I and mean, we just talked about liquidity. It's not that much liquidity there. Once you purchase something, you may have to hold on to it for a while. It may have all type of terms into it. So the government wants to make sure you're not using your last dollar to get into this investment and that you also, if you have these type of networks, you're a little bit more sophisticated than the average person. So the public markets, anybody can get into. The private markets is more sophisticated and it's set aside for the more accredited investor, right? So that's the second thing you have to have too. The third thing, well, I'm sorry, the fourth thing. The fourth thing is being your distribution. Now, what I'm going to do before I get into distribution, we're going to do a quick recap. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back and talk about the other three. So the first thing I told you, ladies and gentlemen, how does it raise money? Do you raise money via debt, or do you raise money with giving out equity? Give, raising money through debt is you are issuing a bond, or you may get money from a bank, and the bank lets you borrow the money at an interest rate to pay them, an interest rate to pay them back. Versus if you raise debt. Once you, uh, no, I'm saying that's what raising debt. But if you are doing it with equity, this is, you are now issuing out stocks and you're giving people a portion of your company. Either way, this is the way companies raise capital. The second thing is liquidity. We talked about the public market is very liquid. The private market is very illiquid. Number four, accredited investors versus non-accredited investors, right? An accredited investor is someone who's going out to go out and make purchases, right? I'm accredited, I wanna go out, I wanna make some purchases, you know, things like that. Sophisticated investors, people who are not accredited, those are the ones who participate in the public market. The public market is open to everybody. The private market is only open to accredited investors. Before a company becomes public, it's usually 90% of the time private. Private meaning it's just that, it's just a regular company. That's the side like, uh, you go out, you decide to start your ice cream shop, you are a private company. You decide to raise debt, you decide to issue stocks, issue bonds, take out loans, you're a private company, right? One day when you decide to IPO, which is an initial public offering, you know, when people go to New York Stock Exchange and they ring the bell and go ding, 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 and everybody says, oh, everybody's roaring about this new company that's coming on the market. That is the public market. That's when you make your initial public offering. Your initial public offering, my friend, is when a company now is uh, available to the public. Anybody can go out and buy a publicly traded company. A publicly traded company could be something like an Amazon, a Facebook, a Google, an Apple. Those are publicly traded companies, the McDonald's, household names that are publicly traded. I'm trying to think of a company like Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is not a publicly traded company, to the best of my knowledge, unless it's owned by a group and that group 
owns Chick-fil-A or something like that, but Chick-fil-A itself is not a publicly traded company. Subway, who heard of Subway sandwiches? I've never seen Subway on a publicly traded market, right? So those are privately held companies. That's a big difference. A big difference. So guess what? You can make investments into the public market, which is open to everybody, but you can't, not everybody can make investments into the private market. Now we discussed earlier about how companies, number one, how money is raised in the private market and the public market. Number two, we talked about the liquidity. And number three, we talked about being accredited, right? Number four, how do you get paid? In the private market, you're paid by distributions, right? You go in, you commit your capital. You go in, a company may come to you and say, hey, we're raising $100 million. And once we get this $100 million, we're going to go out and we're going to go buy all of the liquor stores and marijuana stores in Colorado. That might be their strategy. All the small mom and pop marijuana stores in Colorado, we're going to purchase them all. And once we purchase them all, we're going to turn around and sell them all. Right? I mean, they're going to turn around and bring them together and then they're going to sell them and do whatever they want to do with them, right? So they may go out to sophisticated investors. They may hit up family offices. They may discuss family offices and say, hey, um, they may go to family offices and say, um, the family offices could be something like someone like myself. I'm a registered investment advisor. They could go to them and say, hey, you know what? We want to raise money from you because we, we need to raise this hundred million dollars to go out and make these purchases. So when you are as an investor, you say, hey, you commit capital. You are a limited partner. You commit capital of $10 million, let's say. I'm going to give $10 million to this $100 million fund. You write a check for not, I'm sorry, you don't write a check. You sign an obligation. I'm going to give you $10 million, right? So now, whenever that fund needs money, it's going to call you. They're going to say, hey, Prince, we're getting ready to go buy all these marijuana shops. We need $3 million from you. You're like, okay, no problem, because I committed $10 million to you. You write a check for $3 million. You take that $3 million, you in return, go and do what, right? You take that $3 million, in return, you go and purchase companies, right? That fund goes out and purchase companies. Once it gets done with the money, it distributes the money back to you, right? Then it may call and ask you for more money. It may do things like that. So I don't want to go too deep into it, but you're paid by distribution versus stocks. How do you make money from a stock? Once you purchase that stock, you hope the value of the stock continues to grow and goes higher. I purchased it for $300. Hopefully it goes on up to $400, $500. May pay me a little dividend. Two totally different differences between the public market and the private market itself. Number five, a big reason why I know is a lot of companies stay public, I mean private, I'm sorry, because you know companies start out private. You just mind your business before they go public. It's a big R word, regulations. You got to be regulated. You go in, you may have regulations to say, hey, when you are a publicly traded company and you're taking money from the public, you have to have regulations that your paperwork, you have to turn in every day. Every time you decide to look to the left, look to the right, you need to turn in paperwork. I'm hypothetically speaking. But you have to do 10K reports. I don't know all the reports name. 10K reports, which are annual reports, 10Q reports, what are quarterly reports. If your board decides to issue a dividend, you have to issue our report. Uh, you know, if your board decides to fire someone, someone leaves the company, someone, an uh, insider buys more shares or anything like that, you have to do so much reporting. You, you uh, Companies are going over you as a fine tooth comb. Why? Because you have ability to take money from innocent people from the public who are expecting you're doing the right thing. So you have the governing agency of the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, that's making sure you're just not um, taking money from people and not doing anything with it, which has been done plenty of times in the past. This is why we have an SEC. The SEC was formed, I'm go off into a tyrant here, but the SEC was formed after the Great Depression. It was one of those things that we can uh, bestow the trust back into the market. Because you have so many companies that come in, and I'm pretty sure there's some out there now. They come in, they don't do anything. They just do something to raise money from the public, take innocent people's money from the public, and then go out and do God knows what. Bernie Madoff, right? So the SEC is that governing body. They don't go in and make sure every company is a good company. They just make sure the company has is legal. Is it reporting? 
Is it reported as financials? Is its financials accurate? Have the financials, but well, they don't make sure the accuracy of the finances don't um, misquote me on that. They make sure you are reporting the finances. They make sure you're doing the audits, all those type of things, right? So that's a big thing that you're doing with the public market there and the private market itself. So when you're looking at that private market, people are wondering, and they're, you know, um, when you're discussing and looking at your private market, those are what people think things that people would take into consideration. It's being registered by the SEC, all the regulations you gotta do. Versus in a private market, it's a little bit more private, only sophisticated investors can be with you, but you are regulated by the 1940s Investment Advisors Act. So you still have regulations you have to go by. It's pretty heavily regulated, but it's nowhere near like the public market, right? So regulations are a little bit more tougher in the public market because it's seen as you're taking you you could potentially potentially taking money from uh, investors. Number six, public markets. When you purchase Netflix, I don't know what's going to happen with Netflix one day. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with Netflix one day. What's going to happen with Netflix someday? Um, one day it'll grow up and it become a big company or it may not. I don't know what's going to happen. There's really no exit strategy in the public market unless you are buying a company, uh, making investments and you're probably going to sell it one day as an investor, but it's not really big exit strategies in the private market. The exit strategy is annotated at the beginning. They're saying, Hey, we're going to go purchase this McDonald's. This McDonald's is going to cost us a million dollars and it's generating $5 million in cash flow. We're gonna take that $5 million in cash flow. We're gonna grow that cash flow from 5 million, from, I mean, sorry, $500,000. We're gonna grow it from $500,000 all the way up to $800,000. And once we grow up to $800,000, we are in return going to do what? Take it from $800,000, and we're in return are gonna do what, ladies and gentlemen? Take the money from $800,000, and we're gonna sell this company. We're going to grow it from 10 employees to 25 employees, and we're going to sell this company. So in the private world, people go with the exit in the beginning, in their mindset. They're like, we're going to take this McDonald's, and we're going to buy three more McDonald's, and we're going to close one of them, and we're going to do X, Y, Z, and that's how we're going to make things happen, right? So that's what companies look at as they go forward, right? Companies look at as they go forward, they look at it and say, hey, we can move at any time, right? And what I mean by moving at any time is um, when we're going to take this company and we're going to build this company and once this company grows, we're going to sell it. Private markets, that's what they do. They come in with the exit strategy in mind in the beginning. So let's do a quick wrap up before we get out of here. Uh, we talked about it. The difference between the private markets, companies start off private, they grow, Facebook starts off in a Harvard room, a dorm room. The idea grows. They get investors behind it. They they acquire debt. They use cash. Whatever they do, they raise the company. Now it's this big social. It's this big website that everybody's using. It has a million followers and users on the page. And in return, now you decide you want to go public. Now you become to the public market. Now you're raising money from the public. You're more liquid. People can get in and out of your Facebook stock with ease. Back when Facebook was working in somebody's Harvard uh, room, nobody probably knew it. Nobody knew how to get money behind it. People probably weren't sold. Number three, you got to look at the way that it. Um, anybody could invest into Facebook today, but back when it was in that Harvard bedroom, it was hard to invest into. Number four, you're talking about how you make your money. You got to get distributions when you're in the private market. In the public market, you're hoping that stock goes up over time and pays you a nice dividend. Number five, the public market is more heavily regulated because it has investors that are not as sophisticated that they are in the private market. Number six, exit strategies. Private equity moves in with the exit strategy in mind in the beginning versus the... Um, in the, in the public markets, you look at Facebook, people just purchase it, they hold on to it, hopefully it does great things into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you got a good introduction into the private markets and public markets. Um, I've been in the private markets myself to give you a little history for about the last year. That's why I haven't been making a lot of content, able to come to you guys and girls like I usually would like to and want to do because I've signed a lot of NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. If you're not familiar with NDAs, 
things I can't speak about and talk about once while I'm doing my internship. But once my internships in the private markets are said and done, then I can speak more about uh, things into the public. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be my time. As always, y'all know my name is Prince Dykes. I'm the Prince of Investment. And to the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe, make sure you go check out my book series, Made Exactly. They make perfect gifts, birthday gifts. They make good birthday gifts. They make good Christmas gifts for your kids, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, your, your next door neighbor kids, the kids at your local church, the kids at the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club. Teach your kids about investing credit and insurance. Wesley learns to invest. Wesley learns about credit. And what's to learn about insurance. Until the next video podcast, cartoon, whatever else you see me doing around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.